pleasant good evening to you watching. I'm John Gurevich. Alongside John Nash tonight, we've got a good one for you. It's been a close race throughout the last several weeks of the Ivy League season, but the thing is very simple right now. The winner tonight gets the automatic bid to the NCAA. Three teams tied with 11-3 records for the Ivy Championship. A playoff was required. Yale won their match against Princeton the other night and earned the right to play Penn, who earned the bye for the best head-to-head -head record among the three. But tonight's winner goes on to the big dance. Penn has been on a roll. If you go back to February 9th, they were only two and three in league play. But since then, nine consecutive wins. And the nine wins have been by an average margin of more than 19 points per game. John, all eyes tonight will be on Uganda and Yikwe and Andrew Tool. Uganda and Yikwe, the Ivy player of the year, has the ability to do it at both ends of the floor. There you see his shot blocking ability. He can score inside around the basket area. He's got the good ups. He can also shoot it from the perimeter. Andrew Tool, you'll see drive the ball to the basket, scores with the left hand on that play. Very versatile player, has perimeter shooting ability as well, shoots about 40% from the perimeter in the three-point arc, as do his teammates. They're, they're a very good perimeter shooting team. All right, now this Yale Bulldog squad, very balanced, no real standout star. They've got two outstanding freshman guards, but as they showed on Thursday in defeating Princeton, they spread it around. Yeah, this team is well balanced. They're five starters, average between nine and a half and 12 points. Here you see freshman Alex Gamboa give the ball to TJ McHugh, who's got the good hands and catches around the basket, shoots 62% from the floor because he does nothing but take good shots. Their other freshman guard is the Ivy Rookie of the Year, Edwin Drawn. You see the deflection there and gets the ball for the fast break in transition, but he also has three-point range and can shoot the ball well from the perimeter. Boy, by all accounts, this looks like a very evenly matched, very close game. It should be a dandy. They split their two regular season games, and they're off for the championship for the trip to the Ivy League right now. The upstart, upset-minded Yale Bulldogs against the been-there-before Penn Quakers. Stay tuned for the tip-off. In October, college basketball season tips off. Then the countdown begins. 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait. Order Mega March Madness today. Now playing on pay-per-view. Tune to the 100s and order with your remote. It's simple. It's easy. Get the best pay-per-view movies in the comfort of your home with Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. You can order from a huge selection of new titles every week. With frequent start times and digital technology, you get immediate movie satisfaction any time of day. And you never need to pick up the phone. Just order using your remote. For complete listings, consult your on-screen guide starting at Channel 100. Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. The most convenient choice for the newest movies. Looking for this week's top choices in premium movies and sports? Take a shortcut. Turn to DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week for the week's hottest premium movies. It's flawless. And the inside scoop on your favorite sports action. Watch DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week on channels 212 and 500. Cool. Don't miss the best in movies and sports from DirecTV. Starting lineup first for Yale, the forwards Paul Vitelli and Ime Archibong. The center, T.J. McHugh. The guards, Edwin Drawn and Alex Gamboa. Starting lineup for the Penn Quakers. It's a three-guard, two-forward look. There's James Jones, the head coach of Yale. The Penn Quakers starting lineup has Uganda Inyekwe and Coco Archibong at the forward positions. Jeff Schiffner, Andrew Toole, and Tim Begley as the three guards. And, of course, the coach in his 13th year is Fran Dunphy. Let's quickly go courtside. Joined by Matt Yalov. Matt. 
Thank you, John. You mentioned earlier 1962, the last time that Yale made it to the NCAAs. If there was ever a season that they could uh, uh, dominate or overcome the dominance of Penn and Princeton, this is it. Yale is 11-3 in the Ivy. That's the most wins they've had in the Ivy since 1967. And there's no lack of confidence on Yale's part heading into the third meeting of the year against the Quakers. situation with Penn is that well we led the whole game from start to finish in New Haven and basically we led the whole game for 37 minutes down at the Pleasure so we have a lot of confidence to feel that we could play with Penn you know they're a tremendous basketball team they're well coached they're very athletic so you know we have a lot of confidence though that we can get some stuff done just because of what we've done in the past we're going to have to make shots, we're going to have to make plays, we're going to have to make real good decisions on the offensive end. And on the defensive end, be as tough and as strong and as uh, intelligent as we can. We can't be giving up easy baskets both on three-point shots, which they can do, and with inside play, which they also can hurt us with. And they have hurt us with over the two-game period. Uh, so we're going to have to play a real good basketball game. And my sense is, after playing them twice already, this game is going to be a hard-fought contest. All right, we are just about ready. James Jones and the Yale Bulldogs at 20 and 9 this year. Penn Quakers 24 wins and 6 losses. The winner gets an automatic bid to the NCAAs. And we are underway. Tip controlled by Yale. And Ime Archibon, 6'3 junior, steps on the baseline. Yale turns it over. You get the impression from Fran Dunphy's com comments that he has a lot of respect for the Yale Bulldogs. Talked to him on Thursday. He talked about the way in which they play with confidence. Andrew Tool up into the front court. And now Begley on the right side. Inside and Yekwe lays it in. That was too easy. Missed defensive assignment there. You can't, you can't allow Yekwe to get loose like that. Alex Gambo, the starting point guard, a freshman. His pass kicked around by Andrew Tool, so. Yale will inbound. Fresh 35 second shot clock. Yale without a senior on the ball club. These guys are, are young and somewhat inexperienced, but they're very, very enthusiastic. And as we said, they play with a great deal of confidence. And Pennsylvania without a senior in its starting lineup. This is freshman Alex Gamboa, the point guard, to Ime Archibon. And he hands it off to Gamboa. Real balanced attack. You look down their starting lineup, everybody averaging 9, 10, 11 points. Gamboa left wing. This is a two pointer. It's off the iron short. And the rebound to Coco Archibong. Both teams with Archibongs, but they're not related. Yeah, how about that? Coco Archibong and Ime Archibong unrelated to each other. There's Coco Archibong, the miss. Coco the rebound. And Yekwe jam! The pin forwards look for each other inside. Their interior passing that time. Archibong to Yekwe and. Uh, They've been here before. They were here last Tuesday night in a pressure pack game to force the playoff by having to beat Princeton. Yale obviously had to beat Princeton as well to advance tonight. And both teams defeated Princeton by exactly 16 points. Here's Ime Archibong on the right wing. The rebound taken by Andrew Toole in the lane. Long pass ahead to freshman Tim Begley. He lays it in. Penn took advantage that time, got out in transition. Andrew Toole has just been an outstanding floor general for the Quakers all year long. Gamboa makes a move, gets in deep. Ball knocked away and grabbed by Coco Archivon. Pennsylvania out to the 6-0 early lead. Andrew Toole open, driving and trying to dish. But as he does, he gets fouled. Sandwiched by Gamboa and drawn. And the foul is going against Alex Gamboa. Alex Gamboa, the freshman playmaker for Yale, Grabbed hold of Andrew Toole, and the Quakers will inbound baseline. Three guard look for Pennsylvania. Andrew Toole, Tim Begley, and Jeff Schiffner, and then Archibong and Yekwe the forwards. Yekwe missing. Archibong followed. Got it. Oh, and Yekwe scored inside. You saw his confidence in his perimeter game and the offensive rebound. That's something that Penn's got to do. They've got to do a better job offensive rebounding. They're not a real good offensive rebounding team. Edwin Drawn puts it off the back of the rim. Rebound Jeff Schiffner. And for these first two and a half minutes anyway, it has been all Pennsylvania. And Yekwe back into the post, squeezes between a double, and that's traveling. You know, John, not unlike the Yale-Princeton game the other night. Princeton really came out and played well in the early minutes. It took Yale a little while to find their composure. 
Two freshman guards, Alex Gamboa and rookie of the year Edwin Drawn. Center TJ McHugh and forwards Ime Archibong and Paul Vitelli. This is Gamboa. Now Ime Archibong, 6'3 junior, shot blocked by Begley. And they're going to say an offensive foul to boot. Archibong very aggressive that time as he drove the left side of the lane. There was contact from both players initiated by Archibong. We get a chance to take another look at it. As you see, he puts it on the floor with the left hand. Begley got him on the right side, but he had already charged into the defender. Archibong goes out, and 6'6 sophomore Matt Minoff, who's from the Philadelphia area from Cherry Hill East, has come in. Archibong drives into a defender. And that is an offensive foul on junior Yugana Inyikwe. And that's something Fran Dunphy doesn't want his key guys to do and get in foul trouble. That's happened to them before against Yale. And you see Inyikwe goes to the bench right now. Mm. Interesting. Adam Chubb, sophomore, is in. Chubb hasn't been logging a lot of minutes recently. And Fran Dunphy giving an early hook and probably a brief one. But an early one indeed to Uganda and Yikwe. All right, here's Minoff with the ball. This is Vitelli at the head of the circle. Yale now 0 for 4 from the field. And now 1 for 5 on Alex Gamboa's 3. Each and every one of these Yale players is capable of carrying the offense. As John, you've mentioned, it's a very balanced attack. Here's Jeff Schiffner on the wing. Driving, lane, shot clock. Minoff grabs the ball. Edwin Drawn, he was actually the team's leading scorer. Edwin Drawn with the ball passing here. Drawn averaged 12 a game during the season. Here's their center, TJ McHugh. Baseline jumper, no good. Rebound, Tim Begley keeps it alive near the surface and hands it off. TJ McHugh was outstanding on Thursday night against Princeton. Here's Begley, this is a three. Got it! Quakers by eight. They are an outstanding perimeter shooting team. They shoot almost 40% as a team from beyond the three-point arc. And they take a lot of three-point shots. They average more than eight three-point field goals made per game, which puts Penn among the national leaders. Gamboa missing a drive. Scramble for the rebound and a foul called on Yale. Looks like gonna get, uh, they're going to get T.J. McHugh here. Yeah, it's personal number one on McHugh. And we've got an official timeout just inside the 16-minute mark. And the Quakers have an 11-3 start. 324 Division I college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind, reach the tournament. They fight the odds. They beat the clock. Favorites stumble. Underdogs emerge. 64 make it to Mega March Madness. 32 survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet 16. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. This is human nature. Human nature at its best. For the gang from American Pie, it's all about sticking together. Yeah, I kind of super glued myself to uh, myself. Order American Pie 2 on pay-per-view and get unglued with the unrated version not allowed in theaters. Check it out. So don't miss American Pie 2, the unrated version. Premiering March 1st on pay-per-view. John Gurevich with John Nash and Matt Yaloff at Lafayette College in Easton. John Penn out to the early eight-point lead. Hey. It's been very, very aggressive. Here we're going to see the uh, Ivy player. That, well, this is Tim Begley from the perimeter. Knocks down the three. And now you see Coco Archibong find his Ivy player of the year teammate, Ugana Inekwe, who deposits the ball in the, in the basket. Just before the timeout, a foul on Yale center T.J. McHugh. Quakers on the attack now. For the moment, Inyikwe sitting after picking up an early offensive foul. Yale shooting just one for eight so far, as you might have seen. Then five for seven. Archibong into the lane, turns it over. This is Matt Minoff coming out of the pack. Four turnovers already, Pennsylvania. 
Here's Gamboa behind a screen. Vitelli and now Minoff. Minoff stepping up in the lane, feeding McHugh in the post. Minoff on a three. Line drives it in. 6 6 sophomore from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And it's 11 to 6. You know, John, both of these teams not only played well in the Ivy League, they've got some great out of conference wins. Yale beat Penn State at Penn State and Clemson at Clemson. Archibong getting inside. Coco Archibong with four points. Yale has an Atlantic 10 win, too. They beat Rhode Island at New Haven. They did indeed in the Penn Quakers. Winners at Georgia Tech and at Iowa State, and they beat everybody in Philadelphia, although they did lose to St. Joe's once and beat them once this year. They defeated Villanova, LaSalle, Temple, Drexel, and anybody in the area that would play them, including Delaware, Lehigh, and Lafayette. 13 to 6, a seven-point lead. Adam Chubb in the post. Sophomore forward Adam Chubb, wide open, he lays it in. DJ McHugh just lost his balance. Chubb stayed with it. Pennsylvania right now the only Philadelphia team left standing by the way left side the three missed by Edwin drawn rebound Schiffner Schiffner lopes into the front court and his pass is stolen by Edwin drawn he drives with Archibald chasing and misses the layup now Andrew tool Schiffner open Jay off the rim rebound Minoff you can see neither team is bashful. Penn could have pulled it out that time and decided to be aggressive. No foul there. The collision off the hustle by Adam Chubb, but ball out of bounds, last touch by Chubb. You have wholesale substitutions now for the Yale Bulldogs. Fran Dunphy watching his opposing coach, James Jones, making multiple changes. Adam Chubb reaching out. Get a little banged up on the play, and he's been replaced now by Lugana Inikwe. And Yikwe back in, and David Klatsky is in for the first time for Penn. And for Yale, Scott Gaffield is in. Chris Lianza has come in at point guard. A couple of changes. Over on the right side now, the ball put off the rim by Josh Hill. Rebounded by Coco Archibong, and he's got seven rebounds already. Quakers lead by nine. Here's Inyikwe just back in, steps inside, lays it off too hard. And the rebound grabbed by Yale by Josh Hill. Yale, very good rebounding team, and Josh Hill is a battler. He comes off the bench and he plays rugged, aggressive basketball. Scott Gaffield tried to force a pass inside. It was off the foot of one of the Penn players. You see Alex Chubb might have turned an ankle scrambling after that loose ball a moment ago. Chris Lianza about to inbound the ball. He was their leading scorer a year ago. Off-season shoulder surgery caused him to uh, lose some of his effectiveness. He's just now getting back into shape. Off-season shoulder surgery and two great freshman guards causing him to lose his starting job. But they like him off the bench. He's been playing well for them. Bulldogs on the attack now. Gaffield beats it in the post to Hill. Now back out to Gaffield from the corner. Rebound Degley of Pennsylvania. And doing a real good job on the backboard tonight. Quakers looking for their first double-digit lead. Archibong's pass gets knocked out of bounds. Penn will inbound. But first, we've got the inside of 12-minute timeout. 11.40 remaining in the first half. It's 15-6. In October, college basketball season tips off. Then the countdown begins. 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait or to Mega March Madness today. Another building block with their dynasty. 
see Major League Baseball's next great moment with MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. To order, visit us at directtvsports.com. 11 minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half. Quakers 15, Bulldogs 6. Adam Chubb right before the timeout, a couple minutes before turning an ankle. Looks like he will be getting ready to come back in. There's James Jones. John, what a story he's been in only his third year as the Yale coach. He's really infused a lot of enthusiasm into the Yale program. There you can take a look at his record. Pretty impressive, 11 and three along with Princeton and Penn this year in the Ivy, 20 and nine overall. Quakers with the ball and Yekwe goes to the left hand. And the missed shot rebounded by Mark Lovett, a 6'6 freshman. Now here's that Chris Leanza, 6'1 junior point guard. Love it on the right side. Minoff swing it around to Gaffey. Here's Leanza open for three. Good rebound inside, but then off the hands of Mark Lovett. And it'll be Penn Ball. Yale does a good job on the backboards. They're very active. Let's go Love at that time just couldn't control it. Sorry, John. Let's uh, go courtside. Matt Yaloff checking in. Yeah, John, Adam Chubb had his left ankle taped up right over here on the sideline. Then he took a little run around behind the uh, bleacher area, try to make sure it's okay. Uh, taped up pretty tight. He looks like he's ready to come back in the game. Quakers lead by nine. We're about nine minutes into the first half. Andrew Tool coming off the screen. Feeds in Yekwe underneath. Oh! Well, that was a terrific catch by Inekwe. I don't know that Tool really wanted to lead him that much, but Inekwe able to take it to the other side for the reverse. And for the first time tonight, the Quakers' lead extends to double figures. Art Yale with the ball now. Leanza. There's Leanza driving down to the baseline. Here's Ime Archibong back in. Stumbles, nearly travels. Now Scott Gaffield driving, losing. Yeah, looks a little bit tight right now. Yeah, their, their youth might be showing just a little bit, their lack of experience. Schiffner up in the front court to Inyekwe. Baseline jumper. Rebound Scott Gaffield. They like to play up-tempo, Yale, and they can score in a hurry, so there's so much time left. I know Coach Dumpy and the Penn Quakers are, are still very much concerned. Yale gave Penn everything it wanted in the two regular season meetings. Of course, beat Pennsylvania at New Haven and then led for most of the game at the Palestra just a couple of weeks ago before the Quakers pulled that one out. Jan Fickiel, freshman center, has come into the Penn line. The Quakers have the ball. These teams sort of mirror each other. David Klatsky, who also was a starter for the Quakers last year, comes into the ball game off the Quaker bench. Fickiel is left open after a collision. Nothing was called, and Fickiel was left free. Well, if you don't hear the whistle, keep going. He's played very well of late. 19 to 6. It's been the Quakers in control, at least so far. Now in the post, Josh Hill gets open inside, but they're going to say that's a traveling violation. Take a look at the numbers on the Yale Penn games this year. Back on February 8th, Yale defeating Penn. That is actually the last time that Penn has lost. Yes, that's correct. It's about a month ago. And they've won nine consecutive, including the win at the Palestra, against Yale a couple of weeks after the loss. And they had to make a valiant comeback to win that game. Andrew Tool straight on three. Rebound in Yekwe. Now Klatsky stepping up here. Schiffner. Jeff Schiffner open. Pulls the trigger. No good. Rebound high in the air, and they're going to say a foul on Penn. It's going to be on the next way, I believe. That would be that two. Be two, and it's with eight minutes to play, not almost nine minutes to play in the first half. I think Rand Dunphy's probably going to get his player of the year back on the bench. There you see the missed shot, battle for the backboards, and Ghana and Nick Way to the bench. Coco Archibong back in. T.J. Mm. McHugh returning for Yale. And Paul Vitelli has returned to the Yale lineup as well. So James Jones beginning to go back to starters. Alex Gamboa is back in. And Edwin Drawn has returned. So all starters now on the floor for Yale. 
T.J. McHugh. This is a guy who has shot 62% from the field. Jan Fickiel now on a break. Boy, Fickiel taking advantage. Caught Yale napping. He just ran out and nobody ran with him. John, a 10 nothing run now. Penn's defense has been terrific. Their man to man is really good right now. And that's really been the story in their nine game winning streak. That's really what they've turned around. And the offense has really been there all year. Vitelli on the left, short. Rebound Vitelli. The follow, no good. Rebound Eme Archibald, and he gets fouled. They got to give Yale credit for staying with it there. Vitelli, a very good perimeter shooter, also led the Ivy League in rebounding this year. He may arch bomb to the free throw line. You see Vitelli's miss comes right back to him. Can't get it to go, but Archibong in the area. First free throw is good, so finally Yale is able to end what was a 10-0 Pennsylvania run. And Ime uh, Archibong not related to Coco Archibong of Penn. 72 percent free throw shooter this year makes both. Still Yale does not have a field goal in more than what six minutes now. 21 to eight again a credit to the defense played by the Quakers. Junior point guard David Klatsky running the offense. Now Schiffner. Here's Archibald. Begley three. Go. Oh. <laughs> he had the uh, he had the range, but he put it off short. And from where we were, that looked like he was going straight on in, but he missed it. Now the other one. Quakers will have another shot. Klatsky makes a move, pushes away, and feeds Archibong. Archibong with a three. That's off the rim. Rebound tipped in by Schiffner. Terrific play by Schiffner to stay in the air, have the concentration to put it back with the right hand. Field goal drought here. About seven minutes. Edwin drawn finally. Buries a shot. That's the first points for Edwin drawn, the Ivy League Rookie of the Year. All right, 23 to 10. Before that bucket, Yale's previous field goal came with 14:37 left in the half. And we've got less than seven minutes remaining in the half right now. All right, here's Tim Begley. Fickiel on the wing. Ten on the shot clock. And that's going to be offensive against Fickiel. T.J. McHugh had position inside. Fickiel a little indecisive. And out of control. And now an official timeout. All right, so six minutes and 30 seconds. Jan Fickiel and the Penn Quakers lead 23 to 10. We have a situation. The speed. The skill. The power of Jet Li. Don't do that again. Jet Li, Bridget Fonda. Kiss of the Dragon. Now playing on Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. Three hundred twenty-four Division One college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind: reach the tournament. They fight the odds. They beat the clock. Favorites stumble. Underdogs emerge. Sixty-four make it to Mega March Madness. Thirty-two survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet Sixteen. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. 6.30 left in the first half. John Gurevich, John Nash in Easton, Pennsylvania. Also, Matt Yaloff on our crew. And uh, Matt is going to throw a little confusion onto the uh, Archibong situation. Yeah, John, you mentioned that I may Archibong and Coco Archibong are not related. That is true. I may from Greensboro, North Carolina, and Coco hailing from Pasadena, California. But the story doesn't end there. I may Archibong's brother, I may of Yale, his brother, Tony, is a freshman at Penn. Talk about conflict of interest, John. Quiz on this later in the broadcast. Alex Gamboa nails a three. 
And with that field goal, Yale is just 4 of 21 thus far in the first half from the floor. You know, but if you're Penn, you know they're not going to shoot that low percentage all night. Exactly. And so you, you may like the way you've started out if you're Penn, but you've got a lot of basketball left. Conversely, Penn is 11 of 21. They're shooting 52%, and it's not likely that they'll keep up at that pace. Begley, straight on, three. Got it. Maybe it is likely. Beg Begley's had to range. Tim Begley's got three buckets now. Two of them have been three-pointers. He's got eight points, and it's 26-13. Edwin Drawn, 6'5 freshman. Now Gamboa. There's Minoff beyond the head of the king. Runs into Begley. No foul either way. No harm, no foul. Good body control by Minoff that time. After the contact, maintain his balance. Coming up on the five minute mark, first half. Wakers have led all the way. Archibald. Up in the lane. Got it. Just jumps over the defense. Coco Archibald. Six points for him. 28-15. Yale turns it over. Talked about Yale's freshman guard, Tim Begley, a good freshman for Pennsylvania. Yes, he is. He's got size, too. Schiffner driving. Lost it. But a foul on Yale on the way in. And they're going to get Edwin Drawn, number four, on a reach-in. His first personal foul. Foul call number 40, PJ McHugh, his second. That's the fourth four. team foul. You know what? They may say McHugh on this foul. Let's see. Schiffner. Two fouls. Oh, I would agree with you. They've announced, you, you saw both Braun and McHugh were there defensively. Maybe they both got him. They, they've announced McHugh. Well, for now, we'll make it McHugh. Now, that's two fouls on Yale center TJ McHugh then. And he's just going out of the ball game, replaced by Josh Hill. Schiffner makes both free throws. And it's 30 to 15, so Penn matches its biggest lead. And yeah, for now, TJ McHugh, Yale center on their bench with two fouls. Edwin Drawn has gone to the bench as well. There's Paul Vitelli, uh, Matt Minoff. Long three by Minoff. I don't think that's what James Jones was looking for. And here comes Penn. Quakers could open up a new biggest lead if they score here. Coming up on four minutes left in the first half. Andrew Toole, who's been quiet so far, puts it through the hands of Adam Chubb, and that's a Penn turnover. Quakers have turned it over seven times. If that number was a little bit lower, they'd be even further ahead. They might be out of the. They might be in the NCAA tournament by now. You know where they've done a good job. The Penn Quakers have scored inside. They've they've really dominated the paint area, scoring 20 of their 30 points in the paint. Mm. Minoff's pass knocked away, but Gamboa recovers. There's Ime Archibong driving on Shipman. and Archibong getting inside for Yale. Nice move by Archibong. Adam Chubb came over with late weak side help, and Archibong got around him. Three guards for Penn, Andrew Toole with the ball, and then Tim Begley and Jeff Schiffner on the floor, and then the two guys up front are Coco Archibong and Adam Chubb. Another great defensive play by Archibong. Ime Archibong comes around Jeff Schiffner, gets the ball, and Schiffner has no choice but to reach out and grab. First personal on Jeff Schiffner. Team foul number four on the Quakers. Here's the inside of four minute timeout, 322, left in the half. The new home run king of baseball. And the old one hit. And there it is, he's got a no hitter, he's no hitter, he's got the no hitter. And there's a new all time run scored record hold. And the D backs, one two punch, mows down the opposition. The Yankees add another building block to their dynasty. See Major League Baseball's next great moment with MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. To order, visit us at directtvsports.com. It's simple. It's easy. Get the best pay-per-view movies in the comfort of your home with Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. Woo!
you can order from a huge selection of new titles every week. With frequent start times and digital technology, you get immediate movie satisfaction any time of day. And you never need to pick up the phone. Just order using your remote. For complete listings, consult your on-screen guide starting at Channel 100. Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. The most convenient choice for the newest movies. All right, tonight's game is brought to you by Mount Ephraim Dodge. John Gervich, John Nash, Matt Yaloff in Lafayette College's Kirby Fieldhouse. Ed Rendell among the pin fans on hand for tonight's game. His team has gotten out to a 30 to 17 lead. It's about 50-50, Yale fans and Penn fans former, shoehor shoehorned in. The former mayor in a dogfight himself with uh, the gubernatorial job up for grabs. Coming up on the three-minute mark, Quakers lead 30 to 17. All right, here's Yale on the attack. I'll tell you what, each uh, group of fans are probably equally noisy as well. This building is packed. Seats about 3,500. Small building, nice facility. Inside pass ball laid in by Josh Hill. That's what Yale does very well. Their interior passing is terrific. They haven't executed that tonight, but that's an example of what they can do. 30 to 19. Yale has not led it all so far. Penn has been up by as much as 15. Here's Coco Archibong, offers a fake, steps up, shoots way off. Rebound Coco Archibong. Collision inside, loose ball, scramble, and they're going to say jump ball. The possession arrow is pointing the Quakers' way. Substitutions into the ball game for Yale. Chris Lianza comes back, as does Mark Lovett, Archibong, and Gamboa to the Yale bench. Here you see Coco Archibong off target, but gets the ball back and then loses his balance, and there's a mad scramble. Tied up and Penn's uh, possession because the possession arrow are in their favor. Uganda Nyekwe remains on the Penn bench. A little bit of foul trouble for him. Two personals. He's not played a lot in the first half. Quakers make a couple of changes. Andrew Toole, who has yet to score. Now it's Archibong. Here's Klapsky. Jan Fickiel baseline jumper is good. That's terrific ball movement. Swing the ball in the perimeter. Get it to the guy with the most time to get his feet set. 6'10 freshman from Germany, Jan Fickiel has six points. Now Josh Hill answers for Yale. I like Josh Hill's aggressiveness around the bucket. 6'7 sophomore from Wilmington, Delaware. Nearby, a lot of these uh, Yale kids have family, I'm sure, here tonight because they're, they're from uh, New Jersey, some of them. Josh Hill from Wilmington, Delaware. A little closer than New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah. Fickiel down in the post, twisting and scoring. Boy, he has been a revelation for Pennsylvania. He's a big guy developing right before your eyes. Josh Hill in the post against Fickiel. David Klatsky doubling down, and they call a foul on Klatsky. How about Josh Hill? Turned with the left elbow, moved Fickiel out of the way. Might have been called for the offensive foul, but I like this young man's aggression. Here you see the entry pass from Lianza. Josh Hill with the fast turn, backed up Fickiel. Now we're going to have a timeout. Yeah, just a 30 second timeout here. Hill getting ready to shoot free throws, but. A 30-second timeout taken. We're down to 1.29 left in the first half. Penn leading 34 to 21. A trip to the NCAA tournament at stake. The winner goes direct to the NCAAs. Take a look at what Yale has been able to do. This is only their third Ivy League title in school history. Again, officially, Yale, Penn, and Princeton all have been declared Ivy champions after finishing tied for first. They had, Yale had the 20 and nine record. They have not had a 20 win season since 1949. And this was their most conference win since 1967. You know, John, when Penn defeated Princeton the other night, giving Yale a share of that championship, they went to the uh, Fieldhouse and cut the nets down in celebration around 12 o'clock midnight. They'll all hang banners, but only only one perhaps will go to the NCAA tournament. Although I think Penn deserves consideration should they not win the ball game tonight. I would think they'd, they'd get a lot of consideration as an at-large. But as you know, the Ivy 
is not known for getting at large bids. Josh Hill makes two foul shots, and it's 34-23. So Yale has quickly moved to within 11 now. Andrew Toole on a drive turns it over. And coming the other way, it's Chris Lianza. Yale on the attack now, trying to get the lead into single figures here. Here's Josh Hill, who's been effective. Leaning in, loses it, and Yale recovers. Lianza, three, back of the rim. And now a foul, it's on Yale. Mark Lovett seems surprised, but he's guilty. He pushed off. No argument from the sideline, anyway. Here you see the ball in the air by Chris Lienza under the bucket, although we don't see the, the push because uh, we're following the flight of the ball. Lovett picks up the personal. That's Lovett's first. It is team foul number five on Yale. Penn has 16 fouls. Yale has five. Last minute of play, first half. Quakers by 11. And now Andrew Toole on the board for the first time tonight, nailing a three. Timeout taken by the Bulldogs. Yale stops the clock, 40 seconds left. Pennsylvania back up by 14. Andrew Toole, who has had a terrific season, averaging 14 and a half points per game. Zero tonight until the three a moment ago. John, you get the impression that he wanted to allow his teammates to force the offense, and he's just sitting back. He knows, Andrew Toole does, that he's capable of getting some shots if necessary. And maybe he just sensed the momentum shifting a little bit and decided to put up the three. We're going to take another look at it. Just lining it up at the top of the arc. Andrew Tools made a major difference in his Penn team this year. Transferred from Elon University out of the Big South Conference. Was Elon's scoring leader as a sophomore. Sat out last season and was up among the scoring leaders for Penn this year. Second on the team behind in Yikwe. And first team all Ivy League, Andrew Tool. That's an acknowledgement of you know, what the rest of the league felt about him. All right, Yale on the attack now, off their timeout. Penn leads by 14. Ime Archibong in deep. 10 seconds on the shot clock. This is Chris Lianza. Ime Archibong for three. Good rebound inside, and then thrown into Josh Hill, who scores. Josh Hill with Vicky L right behind him, just turns and muscles the ball up off the backboard. Now Penn breaking down court quickly. A missed shot, buzzer sounds, and we are at halftime. Well, the Quakers control the first half, but not in so lopsided a fashion as to erase any doubt. This game's still very much the outcome hanging in the balance, but the Quakers do lead by a dozen. Yeah, any notion on the part of the Quakers that this game is over could be very, very dangerous, and I'm sure Coach Dumpy's going to be instructing them of such at the half. Coming up at halftime, our halftime sports night update. We'll have highlights from the first half and then analysis and stats and on to the second half. Let's go to Matt Yaloff courtside with Yale coach James Jones. Thank you very much, coach. Only 12 points down, although Penn seemed to dominate much of that first half. Do you feel pretty good right now? Well, the way we played in the first half to be only 12 points down, I feel pretty good about it. But obviously, they have a little bit more momentum, and we got to break that. We got to get stops, and we got to make sure we get them stopped. How do you stop them in the paint? They seem to score a bunch of points inside on you there. Well, we got to do a better job of making sure we get guys off the block and making it more difficult for them to get at the basket. How about this crowd? Neutral site. Do you feel neutral? Well, it looks like a good crowd to me. I, I, to be honest with you, I can't. I, if there are 100 people here at 10,000, I wouldn't know. you got bigger things on your mind. Thanks so much for joining us. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, John. All right, Matt. It is halftime. Quakers lead 37-25. Tim Begley and Jan Fickia leading Penn with eight points each. Josh Hill with eight for Yale. Coverage continues. Stay with us. This is human nature. Human nature at its best. For the gang from American Pie, it's all about sticking together. Yeah, I kind of super glued myself to uh, myself. Order American Pie 2 on pay-per-view and get unglued with the unrated version not allowed in theaters. Check it out. So don't miss American Pie 2, the unrated version. Premiering March 1st on pay-per-view.
324 Division I college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind, reach the tournament. They fight the odds. They beat the clock. Favorites stumble. Underdogs emerge. 64 make it to Mega March Madness. 32 survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet 16. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. See Major League Baseball's next great moment with MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. To order, visit us at directtvsports.com. Dream big, live the life. Now playing on pay-per-view. Tune to the 100s and order with your remote. All right, it's halftime at Kirby Fieldhouse at Lafayette College, Pennsylvania 37, Yale 25. Welcoming you back, I'm John Gurevich alongside John Nash. Penn got out to the good start. They scored, what, the first eight points of the game, and it looked like they were pulling away, but Yale has really maintained a little bit of closeness here. Trying to crawl back into it, but the Penn defense, especially early in the first half, was outstanding. Oh, yeah. Yale's shooting just 31% for the half. On the other hand, Penn has shot a high percentage, primarily because they've scored in the paint. They're shooting 57% in the first half, and they've done a terrific job on the backboard, out-rebounding the Bulldogs 22 to 10. All right, let's take... A little bit of a look from at some of the pictures from the first half. Penn, who has a, an ability to move the ball around the perimeter. Here you see Tim Begley, the freshman, lining up the tray and knocking it down. Ime Archibong on the miss, but they get it back, and Josh Hill's been a factor inside. That shot by Begley was the one that had given Penn its biggest lead, a 15-point lead, but with Josh Hill and company trying to keep it close, the difference now is 12. All right, Quakers 37, Bulldogs 25. We have a situation. The speed. The skill. The power of Jet Li. Don't do that again. Jet Li. Richard Fonda, Kiss of the Dragon. Now playing on Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. In October, college basketball season tips off. Then the countdown begins. 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the CAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait or to Mega March Madness today. Looking for this week's top choices in premium movies and sports? Take a shortcut. Turn to DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week. For the week's hottest premium movies. It's flawless. And the inside scoop on your favorite sports action. Watch DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week on channels 212 and 500. Cool. Don't miss the best in movies and sports from DirecTV. See Major League Baseball's next great moment with MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. To order, visit us at directtvsports.com.
and welcome to the Kirby Sports Center on the campus of Lafayette College. The Ivy League and the two participating institutions would like to thank the Athletic Department of Lafayette for helping to plan and conduct this important game. We also welcome tonight's television audience on Comcast Sportsnet and DirecTV's Channel 611. you check out the internet home of the Ivy League. Log on IvyLeagueSports.com for all the latest. Purchase your authentic Ivy League merchandise from Ivy Sport by logging on to the company's extensive website, IvySport.com. It's your source for high-quality Ivy League apparel. 324 Division I college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind, reach the tournament. They fight the odds, they beat the clock. Favorites stumble, underdogs emerge. 64 make it to Mega March Madness. 32 survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet 16. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. You want to watch a big show on Direct TV, but your day is so busy you think it's not going to be. Oh, yeah. you got to drop the kids and the dog needs a walk. And when the really good part comes, that's when your mama calls to talk. But just look for the all-day ticket and pay once. And when you're ready, you can pick it all day till 6 a.m. Eastern. So when you're watching a show and you really got to go, just get all-day ticket. And when you're ready, you can pick it. You know what I'm saying? All-day ticket. This is human nature, human nature at its best. For the gang from American Pie, it's all about sticking together. Yeah, I kind of super glued myself to uh, myself. Order American Pie 2 on pay-per-view and get unglued with the unrated version not allowed in theaters. Check it out. So don't miss American Pie 2, the unrated version. Premiering March 1st on pay-per-view. Now playing on pay-per-view. Tune to the 100s and order with your remote. Heading towards the second half, Quakers lead 37 to 25. Take a look at some of the highlights from the first half of this one as the Quakers got out to the lead and held it. Well, Penn did a nice job. We've got a Nick Way inside taking the pass from Coco Archibong. Got them off to the good start with the interior scoring, but they also scored it from the perimeter. Here you see they're passing around the horn. Tim Begley, who knocked down a pair of trays in the first half. Here's Andrew Toole trying to make the penetration. Gets it to the right corner. Watch how the ball reverses, comes all the way around the horn. Jan Piquiel, the jumper. Penn making that Yale defense move. At the other end of the floor, nice pass from Matt Minoff, bounce pass to Josh Hill off the backboard. And Josh Hill gave the uh, Bulldogs some energy off the bench. Josh Hill is the Yale scoring leader at the moment with eight points. All right, the second half is next. Stay with us. Time 
Brown scored record home, and the D-backs one-two punch mows down the opposition. The Yankees had another building block to their dynasty. See Major League Baseball's next great moment with MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. To order, visit us at directtvsports.com. Looking for this week's top choices in premium movies and sports? Take a shortcut. Turn to DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week for the week's hottest premium movies. It's flawless. And the inside scoop on your favorite sports action. Watch DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week on channels 212 and 500. Cool. Don't miss the best in movies and sports from DirecTV. 324 Division I college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind. Reach the tournament. They fight the odds. They beat the clock. Favorites stumble. Underdogs emerge. 64 make it to Mega March Madness. 32 survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet 16. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. This is human nature, human nature at its best. For the gang from American Pie, it's all about sticking together. Yeah, I kind of super glued myself to uh, myself. Order American Pie 2 on pay-per-view and get unglued with the unrated version not allowed in theaters. Check it out. So don't miss American Pie 2, the unrated version. Premiering March 1st on pay-per-view. We are set to go, second half. Quakers lead 37-25. Quickly, let's go courtside, and we've got Matt Yaloff standing by. Yeah, John, I just talked to Fran Dunphy as he came out of the locker room. I asked him what's different about this Yale team tonight uh, from the first two times these teams played. He said, it's really nothing different. They're just not making shots. They got some good looks in the first half, but they're just not falling, and we know got to make shots to win games. John. Look at the first half statistics, and you'll see the shooting percentage for Yale has not been very good. And the other number that's going to stand out is turnovers for the Penn Quakers if we have that come up. But a 37-25 halftime score and Fran Dunphy and company exhorting his troops to keep it going. They've got another 20 minutes of work ahead of them. There you see assistant coach Dave Duke. His family owns a tavern, Duke's Tavern on Saxer Avenue in Springfield, Delaware County. He told me there's going to be a big contingent of Penn fans watching the game there tonight because he couldn't get enough tickets, John. Mm. This building sold out. James Jones, the Yale coach in his third year. Teams are out on the floor, and we are set to go with second half basketball. On the floor for Yale, two freshman guards, Edwin Drawn and Alex Gamboa. Junior center, T.J. McHugh. Sophomore forward Paul Vitelli and junior forward Ime Archivon. Yale was 20 and 9 coming into the game tonight. 11 and 3, same as Penn, same as Princeton in the Ivy League. All right, second half underway. This is Paul Vitelli, who did not score at all in the first half. Now Edwin Drawn. Here's Gamboa. Vitelli in the right corner. Yale on the attack. The ball knocked away but recovered. Shot clock inside the 10 second mark. It's coming down to five seconds. Here's Gamboa spinning in the lane. Loose ball, scramble, rebound to Vitelli. Shot good, three. Well, that might get him going. He, as you pointed out, John was scoreless in the first half. We've got a stoppage in play here. The scoreboard did not record the three-point shot. And you know what? There might be actually a question about the 35-second clock because. You know, should it have reset or not? There's really no change of possession. Here's Gamboa in the lane. Can't get it to fall. Reaches for the rebound. Paul Vitelli in the right place at the right time picks up the loose ball. They have not posted. They just put it up. Uh, you're right, they did. Yep, so the shot does count. And the shot clock argument for Penn does not work. All right, Coco Archibong in deep, and the rebound, T.J. McHugh. Quakers 37, Bulldogs 28. This is the first time Yale has been as close as nine points since the middle of the first half. And the dog pound behind us is going to erupt if they get any closer. He may Archibong missing. Yale keeping the rebound alive. Here's an open. Gamboa missed it short. And the rebound, Coco Archibong, who stumbles and just keeps it alive. 
Now Andrew Tool up in the front court. Wide open three. Around and out. Edwin drawing the rebound, and again we have a whistle. Paul yeah, Michelli. One, one of the Yale players shaking up. Yeah, he's taking a, a hit to the head. Looks like he might, might be bleeding. I didn't see the contact. 6 7 sophomore Paul Vitelli from northern New Jersey, from Morristown, New Jersey. Yeah. He's probably from the nearest hometown, Morristown, New Jersey, just about 30 minutes away from eastern Pennsylvania, across the river in New Jersey. Checks out of the Yale lineup for the moment. And Yale takes over. Matt Minoff has come in, replacing Vitelli at forward. The Bulldogs have moved to within nine, and they've got the ball. Ime Archibong strong into the lane, turns it over. Coco Archibong and Uganda and Yekwe were there defensively. I think Penn wants to try and reestablish the inside game. Coco Archibong's got the position, but Yekwe takes it down the lane. There's two ways to establish inside game. And Yekwe going for the drive rather than the pass, and it's 39-28. Just over two minutes into the second half. Ime Archibong. Alex Gamboa. Double passes to Drawn. Three point shot short. Rebound Coco Archibong. Edwin Drawn has only two points tonight. 6'5 freshman averaging 12 per game on the year. Here's Inyekwe. Lines up a three. Got it! Boy, when you are able to get the ball to fall layup as he did moments ago in the previous possession then your confidence built I'm not sure he really wanted that three but he was left wide open Nyekwe did not play a lot in the first half because of early foul trouble played only eight minutes in the first half well Rand Dunphy did not want to see a repeat of what happened earlier up at Yale when his guys got in foul trouble so he limited his action making sure that he he didn't pick up that third foul away inside recovered by Schiffner and here's Andrew Tool. three guard lineup for Penn Andrew Tool, Jeff Schiffner and Tim Begley and then the two guys up front Uganda and Yikwe and Coco Archibald you're gonna make this an offensive foul off the ball as Tool was setting up Archibald off the ball trying to get position was detected for an offensive foul that's Coco Archibald you get too many Archibongs in the game <laughs> Coco Archibong's first personal foul. NT foul number one here in the half. Paul Vitelli at the moment remains on the Yale bench trying to get the cut stopped up. A little uh, confusion. Fran Dunphy has a question for one of the referees. Fran Dunphy has taken five Pennsylvania teams to NCAA tournaments. Three in the Matt Maloney Jerome Allen years in the early mid 90s, and then two more in the Michael Jordan Matt Langle years more recently. And looking for NCAA trip number six in his 13 years coaching Penn. All right, Ime Archibong for three. Rebound, Yukana and Yekwe. Yale's made a couple of mini runs, but Penn continues to hold them at bay. Quakers with 24 wins this year against six losses. In Yikwe, right side. Rebound, Yale. Matt Minoff. Now Gamboa collides with Andrew Toole. That's going to be a block foul on Andrew Toole. Andrew Toole did the best he could to try and stop the progress of Gamboa. Referee thought he was leaning a little bit. He draws the foul. Gamboa was probing the defense. His first defense. But a non-shooting foul. Returning to the lineup for the Bulldogs, number 21. Scott, Scott Gaffield, Gaffield, you see in there, just checking back into the Yale lineup. A Canadian, 6'6", sophomore from Ottawa in Ontario. Here's Alex Gamboa behind a screen. Now McHugh inside lays it in. Terrific pass from Alex Gamboa. He's really a clever player. The freshman drops it off for T.J. McHugh, and he makes the nice catch and scores. That's the first bucket of the game for T.J. McHugh. Who comes in averaging 10.7 points. Wakers by a dozen. We've got a foul here. It's going against Yale. Non-shooting foul. So we're going to get the 
inside of 16 minute official timeout. 15 48 remaining in the game. Quakers by a dozen. I have a situation. The speed. The skill. The power of Jet Li. Don't do that again. Jet Li, Bridget Fonda. Kiss of the Dragon. Now playing on Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. In October, college basketball season tips off. Then the countdown begins. 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait or to Mega March Madness today. You want me to do the score? Welcome back, 42 to 30 here. It's uh, Penn in the lead, 15-48 to go in the second half. The last time there was a playoff in the Ivy League, you got to go back to the 95-96 season. That game played at Stabler Arena. That's just down the road at Lehigh. Pete Carrill and Princeton and Fran Dunphy and his guys from Penn late in the second half. 105 left, Sidney Johnson, remember this, from Princeton? Giving his team a 57-54 lead, and then Johnson on defense as well, coming up with a big steal there, and Princeton went on to beat Penn. That was the last time there was a playoff in the Ivy League. Pete Carrill, all smiles. That was 95-96 season. John. All right, Fran Dunphy hasn't aged a day since then. <laughs> Seven Ivy League titles in 13 seasons, five trips to the NCAA tournament, and looking for six tonight. You get credit for an Ivy League championship if you finish tied for the conference championship. And so that's how he has seven championships and so far five NCAA trips. Jeff Schiffner on a three looking to get his coach visit number six to the NCAA tournament. And this matches the biggest lead of the game now. A 15 point margin matching the Quakers biggest. Spinning, Edwin drawn, nice move, but he couldn't finish it. I think Penn still is looking to go inside, and Yale's denying them the opportunity, but they're knocking their perimeter shots down. And Yekwe got in the paint there and got fouled and will go to the line. Yeah, they looked on the previous possession. They looked inside for quite a while. There wasn't anything there. This time, they did get the ball to the Ivy Player of the Year. We've gone in Yekwe. Fouled by Matt Minoff, who's got two now. Second team foul on Yale in the second half. And Yikwe to shoot two free throws. First is short. A couple of changes being made, and Paul Vitelli is among the players returning. And also Josh Hill, 6'7 sophomore, who played very well in the first half. Twelve points now for Yikwe. 46 to 30. There's Paul Vitelli with that cut taped up, little bandage above his left eye. Inside the 15 minute mark. Quakers by 16 points. They got out to an 8 0 lead tonight, and they've been ahead by double digits most of the way. Down in the post, Josh Hill, now Paul Vitelli. Three, airballed it over the rim. Rebound shifter. Pennsylvania on the move. Three on two if they hurry. Lead for Coco Archibong in deep. And they're going to get a foul on Yale here. Andrew Chul with a bounce pass to Archibong. Had no chance to get in the air because he was carrying a Yale player draped on his back. But Chul looking for Archibong. Nice pass off the dribble. Foul on Vitelli, his first. Yale with three team fouls. Quakers by 16. Here's Nyikwe again. And he is going back to the foul line. Well, that's your bread and butter. If you can get the ball into the post to Nyikwe, he's going to score or get to the free throw line. Josh Hill's first personal, team foul number four. Here you see the play by Nyikwe. 
against Josh Hill. If you send the double team, and Nick Way's good enough as a passer to find the open man. And that's where Archibong is all, often the beneficiary. And Nick Way for the season averaged 17.6 points per game and six rebounds. Point guard change now. Chris Lianza in. Alex Gamboa out. David Klatsky in. Now these two guys we talked about earlier. Chris Lianza and David Klatsky were both starters for their respective teams a year ago. So they know one another. Lianza the leading scorer for the Bulldogs last year. Averaging about 13 points a game. A couple of foul shots for Uganda and Yikwe. And it's 48 to 30. And the Pennsylvania Quakers are beginning to pull away. This is their biggest lead of the night. Foul here on Coco Archibong. His second. Reached in as Vitelli received the ball. Chris Leanza will trigger the inbound. Yale with four team fouls, Penn with three. Leanza feeds the post, that's Hill. Back to Leanza. Is that traveling? Nothing called. Leanza drives. Josh Hill lays it up, no good. Rebound tip in. Might have been Josh Hill. I think it was Josh Mark Hill. I, I would Hill. give it to Josh Hill. Yep. And Hill becomes the first Yale player in double figures in scoring with 10 points. 48 to 32. And Yikwe open. Slam dunk! You go for the steal, you might pay a price. Yeah, that's what happened. Josh Hill did pay the price. Now he and Yikwe are getting into it. And referee Joe Lindsay. Blows the whistle. I think he could call fouls on each, or, or he could just, or he could just try and calm them down. Joe Lindsay, by the way, from a referee family, his dad, Joe Lindsay, was a top college official from Aston, Pennsylvania, Comcast Country. I tell you what, Josh Hill, darn near got that steal. Yes, he did. But as you say, John, when you gamble like that, you give up the position. You don't get the steal, you pay the price. They're going to say no foul either way. Just calm everybody down and play back in. And, and Yekwe has gone out of the lineup. As has Josh Hill. Both players have left the ball game. Hmm. Just routine substitutions, nothing called. Now we've got a foul called on Jeff Schiffner of the Pennsylvania Quakers. See him there, uniform number four. Jeff Schiffner's second personal foul. And each team now with four team fouls. There's Leanza, whips it on the right side for Telly. Scott Gaffield. Leanza feeds it in the post to McHugh. Now Vitelli's open on a three. Well, Yale is getting some open shots, but they're not making them. Yeah, and you know, Fran Dumphy, that was his comment at the half to Matt Yaloff that their shots weren't falling. I thought he was being a little modest because I thought in the first half the Penn defense was terrific, but Yale has gotten some good looks here in the early stages of the second half. McHugh getting the pass a little further from the basket than he'd like. Now works his way back in. Beats Lianza open three, and that one is good. McHugh made that play by getting close enough to the basket. Lianza was left alone. 50 to 35. Andrew Toole wide open, does not shoot. It's Klatsky back to Tool. Quaker showing some patience on this possession. Shot clock winding down to 10 seconds. Archibong, 15 footer. Good. You know, Yale's been using the zone defense to try and shut down the inside game, and now Coco Archibong rises up and knocks down the J. 52-35. Bucket from the left corner, Mark Lovett, 6'6 freshman. That's a three. 52 38. Fran Dunphy would love it if they just trade baskets the rest of the way. Yale needs stops. Flaxky on the right side. Archibong, same spot, same result. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Found an opening and buried not one but two jumpers now. 54-38. Clock will start to play a factor as we go through these next couple of minutes. Coming up on the 11-minute mark. Klatsky quickly up in the front court. Archibong further away. Rebound off the hands of Jan Fickiel. 
Last touch by the Penn Quakers. Coco Archibong with 10 points and 11 rebounds now. We have an official timeout. In October, college basketball season tips off. Then the countdown begins. 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the CAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait. Order Mega March Madness today. It's simple. It's easy. Get the best pay-per-view movies in the comfort of your home with Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. You can order from a huge selection of new titles every week. With frequent start times and digital technology, you get immediate movie satisfaction any time of day. And you never need to pick up the phone. Just order using your remote. For complete listings, consult your on-screen guide starting at Channel 100. Blockbuster Ticket, only on DirecTV. The most convenient choice for the newest movies. Take a look at the Ivy League Player of the Year, Uganda and Yikwe Penn's junior forward. The number 17 and a half points a game, six rebounds, the field goal percentage, block shots, almost a block and a half per game. And he's put up some outstanding plays tonight. He's really an athlete and he does some sensational things. Here you see the putback with the left hand against Princeton. Get it out of there. Great. Shot blocked by Inekwe, and now the spin move on the baseline and finishes with a two-handed dunk. Inekwe with a quiet first half this evening. Was on the bench quite a bit with fouls, but as this game has transpired, the numbers are now starting to add up 16 points on 6 of 11 from the field for Uganda and Inekwe. All right, here's Yale off the timeout. Pennsylvania by 16. Leanza feeds the post. McHugh driving inside and he got hacked on the way in. So TJ McHugh will go to the line for two shots. Nice job that time by Leanza getting the ball to TJ McHugh so deep. But Schiffner commits the personal foul. Jeff Schiffner on the foul. His third. Fifth team foul number five. Fifteen foul on the Quakers. McHugh makes the first free throw. Andrew Toole back into the lineup for the Penn Quakers, replaces Jeff Schiffner. I asked Fran Dumpy about the difference in Yale. He said they play with so much confidence all year long. And he's a big fan of James Jones as a coach. 54 to 40. Andrew Tool now makes a move and lost the dribble. Here comes Chris Leanza for Yale. Lead for Paul Vitelli. Penn does a nice job getting back, and Yale will set up half court. There's Lovett. Leanza hacks away to near midcourt. Working our way to the 10 minute mark. 54 to 40. Minoff is open, drives up, floater. Ball grabbed and put in. That might have been a pass. I don't know. I'm not sure, but the result is what you want. And TJ McHugh coming alive. Minoff has the ability to put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. 54 42. And now we cross the 10 minute mark. Let's see if Yale has a run to put together. Andrew Tool front court on the right wing. Yale showing 2 3 zone. Begley shoots over it. Three. Got it. That's how you beat the zone, but you've got to have talented perimeter people, and Penn has them. Yale had strung together a 7-2 mini run. Now love it with a three-point shot, rebound in Yekwe, and then a foul as in Yekwe and T.J. McHugh got tangled up, and this will be number three on T.J. McHugh. Team foul number six on Yale in the hand. Penn really has. The ability to beat you both inside with Archibong and Inikwe, and they can beat you outside. They love to establish the inside game first and move inside out. But they'll do whatever it is the defense allows them to do. Shot put up, no good. Rebound. Oh, I'll tell you what, they're going to say a timeout here. The ball was grabbed by Matt Minoff, and then as he was flying out of bounds, they granted him a timeout. 
All right, so 9-14 left in the game. Pennsylvania 57, Yale 42, and they're going to make this a full timeout. We'll be back in a moment. 324 Division I college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind, reach the tournament. They fight the odds. They beat the clock. Favorites stumble. Underdogs emerge. 64 make it to Mega March Madness. 32 survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet 16. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. See Major League Baseball's next great moment with MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. To order, visit us at directtvsports.com. Alex Gamboa, the Ivy League Rookie of the Year, the freshman, averaging 11.1 on the season, three assists, almost three rebounds. Among the leaders in the Ivy League in free throw percentage, good season for him. Indeed, he, he's had a terrific season. I think I gave credit to his teammate as the Ivy Rookie of the Year earlier tonight, Edwin Drawn, but they're both outstanding freshmen. There you see his ability to penetrate and dish. I'll tell you what, there are a number of solid rookies in the Ivy League, Camboa and Edwin Drawn. You know, I looked at a stat the other day, the top four teams, Brown being the fourth, of their 20 starters, 18 were underclassmen. Mm. Forte at Brown, freshman point guard, had a terrific year up there. All right, 57 42, Tim Begley of Cannon. Very good freshman. Yale turns it over, not what they need right now. We are inside the nine minute mark. James Jones and company have nine turnovers now tonight. 57 42. Here, if you're the Quakers, you don't want your team to play tentative, but you also don't want to take ill-advised early shots. Yeah, Begley might have shot that one, but he'll use some clock instead. Against the zone, Klatsky to Tool. He lobs it for Nyekwe, who gets shoved hard and fouled. These teams know each other. As soon as Tool tried to throw the lob, Josh Hill knew what was coming, and he grabbed Nyekwe. Coco Archibong back into the ball game. Here's Andrew Tool looking for the lob. Are they going to say Ime Archibong in the foul? Well, could have been either one. They all gang tackled him. Yeah. Ime Archibong with two fouls for Yale. And the Bulldogs have 16 fouls, so off any additional fouls, Penn will be going to the foul line. There's Coco Archibong in deep spins and banks it in. Well, if they had a most improved player in the Ivy League, he'd be a front runner. You know, what a one two punch Fran Dunphy has inside with Nikwe and Archibong. And then he's got the perimeter snipers as well. This team, Penn, could really knock off some, some NCAA powers. And who knows what will happen if indeed Penn wins. I read somewhere today where one of the uh, predictors has them a, a 13 seed in the West. Yeah, Joe Lenardi on uh, ESPN.com had them 13. I saw CBS Sportsline had Penn as a number 12 seed if they get in. And CollegeRPI.com, I'm just kind of playing around with the internet, had uh, Penn as a number 12 seed as well. You know, this is Saturday. I would have expected you to be watching the cartoons this morning, John. It remains 59 42 coming up on the eight minute mark. Penn still has some business though before they start worrying about seeding in the tournament. They are not out of the woods yet. They turn it over here. And Yale comes back on the move. Edwin drawn up at the front court, drives runner off the rim. Rebound tipped up, no, tipped again. And then saved inbounds by Archibong, and taken by Andrew Toole. Flatsky driving and dishing. Archibong launches a three. 
Well, that's a dagger. I don't know that I'd want to take that shot at that point, but Graham Dunphy obviously loves the result, and it's going to cause a, a, what do we have here, a technical foul? Has built up a 20 point lead off the three by Coco Archibald. 7.34 left in the game. This is the biggest margin yet 62 to 42. In October, college basketball season tips off. Then the countdown begins. 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the CAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait. Order Mega March Madness today. Looking for this week's top choices in premium movies and sports? Take a shortcut. Turn to DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week. For the week's hottest premium movies. It's flawless. And the inside scoop on your favorite sports action. Watch DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week on channels 212 and 500. Cool. Don't miss the best in movies and sports from DirecTV. The last time Yale went to the NCAA tournament was 1962, and it may remain that way. 7.34 left pen by 20 Matt Yellow standing by courtside yeah John how about Coco Archibong and Andrew Toole and Gano Neckway what a trio that Yale has to put up with these three guys are all first teamers in the Ivy League this is only the fifth time in history that three guys from the same team have been on the all Ivy first team and three of those five times it's Penn that's done the damage. So they have a great history there, and Yale has to contend with these guys now for just another seven minutes and 34 seconds. It looks like Penn is going back to the tournament. Guys? Coco Archibong with 15 points. The lead has mushroomed to 20. Just before the timeout, a little bit of confusion as to whether there was meant to be an official timeout. There was. And so now play resumes. There was no, no technical and no personal foul call. But we have a personal here, a block foul on Tim Begley, who has called for his third. And so each team now with 16 fouls. That was the seventh, I believe, John on Penn, and they're going to be in, uh, sending Yale to the free yep. throw line for yep. the one and one because they're now on the penalty. Yep. As uh, T.J. McHugh comes back for the Bulldogs, Tim Begley goes out for the Quakers. And Ime Archibong goes to the line for the one and one. Junior forward makes the first free throw. Well, it's going to take a remarkable rally and comeback for Yale. Penn, the cream of the Ivy. Also the cream of the Big Five. Last Philadelphia team left standing. As it has been a lean year in terms of NCAA tournament aspirations. Not aspirations, but success. Well, they were definitely, in my opinion, the best team in the Big Five this year, and they proved it on the floor. They lost the first meeting with St. Joe's, came back and beat them the second time around, but beat everybody else. Archibong rebounds the Inyikwe miss, and Archibong finishes. That is now a 17-point game for 6'8 junior Coco Archibong. Good pass inside, and a few shot blocked. Andrew Toole got up, and then a scramble, and Jeff Shifter was taken down hard. That was a terrific defensive play by Andrew Toole. T.J. McHugh did not know that he was behind him. Schiffner went down hard, and his his right arm is holding his head now. He's stunned. T.J. McHugh and Jeff Schiffner coming together. And a little frustration on the part of Yale right now. Cooler heads must prevail. Referee's going to sort things out. Take a look. There's Andrew Toole from behind. T.J. McHugh misses the shot, and he and Schiffner get tied up, and then McHugh pulls him down. That's not right. 
A tough takedown by TJ McHugh. We'll see what they call on McHugh. I think McHugh just frustrated that he was unable to complete the play and just wouldn't let go of Schiffner's arm and unfortunately Schiffner could not break his fall. It's just going to be it's going to be a personal foul on McHugh. They're going to not throw any flagrant or technical foul just the personal and look at this. He's, I mean he he does not want to say Jeff Schiffner wants to come back in. He's uh, due for free throws and they're uh, they're doing the rush tape job on him. That's going to be a look he hears about for the uh, foreseeable future. 647 left in the basketball game. The winner goes to the NCAA tournament. Penn has been in control throughout. Yale has offered a couple of mini runs. But every time they have made an attempt to come back, the closest they've gotten has been nine since really the beginning of the game. Penn has always had an answer. Penn's had what some people might view as a little bit of an advantage. Having not had to play since Tuesday, they were able to take Wednesday off, practice Thursday and Friday in preparation for, for Yale. Yale, of course, had to defeat Princeton on Thursday night, stayed in Philadelphia because that game was at the Palestra, and then came up here on Friday and practiced for Penn, but both teams know each other pretty well. Now they're going to put Tim Begley at the line to shoot here. As Jeff Schiffner, for the moment, remains on the Pennsylvania bench. So they're going to have Begley shoot. Take one house, more look. A little housekeeping at the other end as well by the referee, making sure the wet spot is cleared up. But there you see, as Schiffner went down, he was unable to brace himself and head bounced off the floor. And well, it looked like his arm might have gotten twisted around. That was I thought really it was his scary. arm at first. I thought he may have broken his arm, frankly. But he, he got a pretty good knock on that noggin. All right, it's going to be Begley at the line to shoot for Schiffner. And the front end of the one and one's no good. Well, if Yale has a run left, now's the time. Less than seven minutes remaining. They've got time to make a run, but they are in a deep, deep hole. Archibong driving in. And we'll go to the line. What you don't want to do if you're the Penn Quakers is what they just did. That's commit a personal foul. Just uh, double checking. Uh, Schiffner's vision, which uh, seemed to be, at least from here, it looked like he was following everything. He may Archibong at the line, misses the first free throw. Matt Minoff back into the ball game for Yale. Paul Vitelli goes out. 64 to 44. Now, if you're going to mount a comeback, you've got to make free throws. He may Archibong misses both. A little chant behind us from the pin fans. I think they were saying Coco's better. Coco's better. <laughs> Ime Archibong missing the free throws. It remains a 20 point difference. Quakers will work some clock now. Junior guard Andrew Toole to Uganda Inyekwe. Back of the rim. Rebound back tap by Begley. Here's Toole. Begley left corner three off the rim. Rebound Archibong. Open baseline jumper. And again, maybe a little bit quicker in the shot clock than Coach Dunphy would have liked. Now right now, Penn really all they want to see happen is the, the clock run out. But they're making shots, so they continue to build their lead. Matt Yalov standing by. Matt, word on Jeff Schiffner. Yeah, cut on the right side of his head. You saw him go down pretty hard. You showed that in the replay. Uh, he's not disoriented, though, according to the trainer. He is okay enough to go back in the game. Whether he goes back in, that's going to be Fran Dunphy's call. 5.52 remaining. Well, I doubt that he'll come back in. There's no need to put him back in with a 22-point lead. And you don't want him to go back in and try to get some revenge. Very quiet game for Edwin Drawn, one of the stars for Yale all year long, has managed only two points in this special playoff tonight. 66 to 46. The headlines will talk about Archibong and Nyekwe and the rest of the Penn Stars, but a lot of the story tonight has been Quaker team defense. Andrew Toole shot no good. They keep it alive. They've been big on the backboard too here, and now Fran Dunphy wants to talk it over. He's taking a timeout. 5.34 left. 
Fran Dunphy just five and a half minutes away from his sixth trip to the NCAA tournament in 13 years. A 66 to 46 Quaker lead. The defense really, as much as anything else, has been what has turned it around for the Quakers. They're in a nine game winning streak. They've, they've won by an average of 19 points per game through the winning streak. And if you were to look at their stats, it's been the field goal percentage defense and the points allowed that have plummeted that have really gone much better for Penn since they got going on this winning streak. Well, John, you and I worked a game earlier this year, Penn, when they played St. Joe at the Palace for the second time. And in preparation for that game, I talked to St. Joe coach Phil Martelli about the Quakers, and he felt they were one of the more underrated defensive teams in the country. He has a great deal of respect for Fran Dunphy's ability to coach defense and this Quaker team to play it. Off the 30-second timeout, Quakers back with the ball. Andrew Toole inside, layup, good, and a foul. At this point, you just want to get the game over with without any injury. Here's Andrew Toole, who's really a talented young player. He, he can use either hand on the way to the basket that time. Use the right hand, and he completes the three-point play. 69-46. This is now a new largest lead for Penn. And if you're going to pick a time to have largest lead, it's the last five minutes of the game. Alex Gamboa lost it out of bounds. No harm, no foul. And a little upset is Gamboa because there was some contact, but the referees not blowing the whistle. James Jones has a lot to look forward to with this Yale team in the coming years. And a lot to be proud of. To take a program like Yale that really got very, very little respect and put them on the map again, a tremendous accomplishment for James Jones, whose brother, Joe, is a, an assistant coach at Villanova. Mm. Klatsky knocked it loose. McHugh recovered. Shot clock winding down. Gamboa banks it home from three range. Well, Yale trying to pressure in the backcourt. Penn breaks it pretty easily. Andrew Toole lines up a three. And then the rebound knocked away. Andrew Toole open layup. One of those nights, everything has gone right for Penn and for Yale, which has played so well through the year. Problems all evening. Jeff Shifter looks pretty happy there as the Penn Quakers go up to the bench. Despite the headband he's wearing. Timeout on the floor with 4.31 left. Pennsylvania is making a statement. Quakers 71, Bulldogs 49. Andrew Toole unable to get the perimeter shot to fall, but as the Yale defense moves to the other end, moves away from the basket, Toole just sashays in and drops it in. Well, barring a miracle at this point, the Quakers will go to 25-6 and six and go to the NCAA tournament. With a chance to pull off an upset or two, they will get most likely a 12 or 13 seed. Uh, they will be expected to lose in the first round by the national odds makers, and we'll see. Uh, there again, you see a shot of former Philadelphia Mayor Ed Rendell, a Penn grad, and his wife Midge, I believe, is to his right. He is probably, well, I won't say he's Penn's number one fan, but he rarely misses a Penn Quaker game. I noticed some of the Phillies organization here tonight, too. Richard Dietz, a Penn grad, director of sales for the Philadelphia Phillies. See a few of their ball games on Comcast this year, John. Mm -hmm. All right, four and a half left in this one. And now as the team's set up, we've got a foul on Pennsylvania. It's going to be David Klatsky on his second. You know, I would hate to have to play Yale next year. I don't know what I haven't looked at their schedule. I don't know what out of conference games they have or what tournaments they're going to. But you know teams that are in the same tournament Christmas time or, or during, during the holidays. They don't want Yale in that first night that first night. And the home teams probably won't take Yale either. Not anymore. Nope. Josh Hill at the line. This is two free throws. Double bonus in effect. And two for two for Josh Hill. 71-51. Yale pressuring in the backcourt. Quakers break it. Here's Inyekwe on a break. 
going for the tomahawk. He got fouled. Josh Hill just wouldn't allow it, and Nick Foy was trying to throw it down. Josh Hill, enough resistance to prevent the dunk, but uh, the personal foul sends the Nick Way to the free throw line. You take another look at it here. Ugana! Quaker fans were getting revved up for that thing. Josh Hill, second personal. Ugana and Nick Way at the line for two free throws, the first of which is no good. A 16-point game for Ugana and Yekwe. Six points in the first half, ten more since intermission. And the second is in and out. Now a long lead up on the front court, Chris Lianza. Lianza drives across the lane, dishes. Josh Hill missed inside. Ball out of bounds, last touch by Pennsylvania. Pace has slowed down. It's gotten sloppy in these last two or three minutes. 4.04 still to go before Penn could do any real celebrating. Here's Chris Lianza. And then the three point shot missed by Mark Lovett. Rebound Lianza. Whips it inside to Hill. Shot blocked by Ugana and Yekwe, and then a foul on Yale. Well, you see the shot blocking ability of Ugana and Nickwe. Penn doesn't have the greatest size in the world, but they've got. People in the interior, Nick Way and Archibong, both of whom can rise up. Foul is on Archibong, and that'll be his third personal. But could have gone either way. It looked like one of the officials was calling Yale. Well, all Penn had to do in order to claim this automatic bid was win their last 10 ball games in a row, John. And, you know, Fran Dunphy, he's one of the more unpretentious guys in his profession. He, he just loves to teach and coach, and his ego is such that you know, he, he's the everyday guy. I, I've had the uh, good fortune to know him since way, way back. Mark Lovett winds up making one for two, and now we have a mandatory timeout. Official timeout, 3.53 is all that's left. This is human nature. Human nature at its best. For the gang from American Pie, it's all about sticking together. Yeah, I kind of super glued myself to uh, myself. Order American Pie 2 on pay-per-view and get unglued with the unrated version not allowed in theaters. Check it out. So don't miss American Pie 2, the unrated version. Premiering March 1st on pay-per-view. The 324 Division I college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind, reach the tournament. They fight the odds, they beat the clock. Favorites stumble, underdogs emerge. 64 make it to Mega March Madness. 32 survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet 16. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. 3.53 left in the game, Penn 71, Yale 52. That's a look at Fran O'Hanlon, head basketball coach at the host school tonight, Lafayette College, a longtime former assistant under Fran Dunphy of Penn. And, you know, Fran O'Hanlon was a terrific player in his own right, played professionally for the Miami Floridians, had a lot of great games in the Baker League, and went by the name of Rainbow Johnson in the mm. Baker League. <laughs> Fran Dunphy, the all-time winningest coach in Penn basketball history, established that just a week or two ago. 230, going on 231. Yale pressures in the backcourt, Penn gets a two on one. And Yale, again, thwarts a would-be jam. You know, Fred Dunphy's really paid his dues. He was a assistant at American U, and an assistant at LaSalle, an assistant at Penn. And finally elevated to the head coaching position, and he's just done a marvelous job. 3.35 remaining. Quakers doing a little clock killing. They haven't done much clock killing these last couple of minutes. Going for the showtime moves, which they haven't really finished. Now with the shot clock down deep, and Yekwe misses. And then the rebound for Coco Archibong. How about the Quakers outworking the Bulldogs here in the last three and a half minutes? And then a foul committed by Chris Lianza to stop the clock. I think a little frustration on Lianza's part. 
he'll send Klatsky to the free throw line. Pretty good chance Yale gets an invitation to the NIT, the expanded NIT with 40 teams this year. And rightly so. You know, Fran O'Hanlon, who we saw a few moments ago, was the head coach here at Lafayette. He and Fran Dunphy are contemporaries. Randy O'Hanlon was an outstanding player at St. Thomas More in Philadelphia when Fran Dunphy was a, a, a terrific player at Malvern. Fran O'Hanlon, of course, went on to Villanova. Fran Dunphy to LaSalle. Klatsky with a couple of free throws, 73 52. And now we're crossing the three minute mark. Quakers got off to an 8 0 lead tonight and have led by as much as 23. They lead here by 19 off the driving bucket. And James Jones is going to get a timeout here. Two minutes and 50 seconds left, a 30 second timeout by Yale, 73 54. Couple of little runs by Yale. They nudged into within nine points early in the second half. Actually had moved to within nine and had a possession, but uh, Penn slammed the door. And Penn has done it again with team defense. Yeah, I think that's the story of the game, John. Despite the fact that the Quakers have registered 73 points, it's really been their defense that has ignited their offense. They've done a terrific job, and I'm sure that that was a focus of their practice sessions the last couple of days as they prepared for the Yale offense which is one of the better up tempo offenses that they face in the Ivy League. It is a glum Yale section in Eastern Pennsylvania tonight. But you know they've got a great deal to be excited about for the next couple of years. They've got themselves a great coach who's uh, resurrected the program and it's going to be a bright future in New Haven. Points in the paint tonight to show the Interior dominance of Penn. The Quakers 36 points in the paint. Yale only 18. Oh, it looked like Andrew Tool stepped out of bounds. Penn got a break. Quakers down court. In need of a little clock management here. Andrew Tool slipping, losing. There's Klatsky picking it up. And a timeout for Pennsylvania. Well again I think at this stage of the game what you want to really do is get out of here without any injury you don't want anybody turning an ankle or having some form of mishap that's going to prevent them from practicing worse yet missing an NCAA game. Take a look at that last inbounds play. Tell me if Andrew Tool steps on the baseline here. Uh, he looks not only does it look like he stepped on the baseline before he passed the ball it looks like he dragged his pivot foot. Oops. Oh well. You know I think the referees at this stage are reluctant to blow their whistles as well. Pennsylvania inbounds 232 left in the game now. 73 54. David Klatsky against Chris Lianza. Pass knocked out of bounds. Penn will inbound. Klatsky organizing an inbounds play here. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Ball inbounded. Archibong missed it inside. And the rebound taken off for Yale by Matt Minoff. There's Lianza quickly in the front court. Edwin Drawn misses a layup. He has struggled tonight. He has had a great year. Quakers have it back and drawn fouls Begley. Just over two minutes to play. Edwin Drawn is one for nine from the field. Now this is a guy who averaged a team high 12 points a game. But just one for nine tonight. So Joe Minardi is the one that has suggested that Penn would be a 13th seed. Joe of course is uh, an employee at St. Joseph's University. In fact Joe teams up with the radio broadcast of St. Joe's. But he does an excellent job with the uh, pairings. Tim Begley at the line makes the first free throw has another one coming. Individual leader for Penn tonight has been Coco Archibong. 19 points plus a season high 15 rebounds for Penn's Coco Archibong as you look at the Yale bench. 
Begley's got 13 points. There's a three by Leanza, no good. Or up by Alex Gamboa. And then the Quakers come out with it. Andrew Tool up in the front court, spins back, and now 145 left. The Penn Quakers finishing the Ivy League regular season in the three way tie for the championship will survive this little series of playoff games, move to the NCAA tournament with a win here over Yale. Chris Leanza makes a drive on bucket. James Jones isn't quite ready to concede as he gets a timeout with 130 left. Quakers 75, Bulldogs 56. It has been quite a run this season for Pennsylvania. Well, you know, all the, the the struggles they had at the beginning of the Ivy League season, they had a terrific non-conference season, one of their best ever. Well, we, they beat Tampa. This was the first year in 25 seasons that Penn defeated Temple and Villanova in the same year and then beat Drexel and St. Joe's and uh, LaSalle. And LaSalle to boot. And those games weren't flukes, John, obviously, because at Georgia Tech, they defeated Georgia Tech 79-74. Iowa State, they defeated 84-77. So they had some quality wins. Their loss to Columbia was one that, you know, disappointed all the Quaker fans. But I think the Quaker fans right now are going to enjoy the way in which the season unfolded. Winning your last 10 games has a nice ring to it. 10 straight wins, average margin of victory, almost 20 per win. You have to feel as if Penn is in a groove right now. Klatsky got tangled up. Would have been a five-second count, but he got a timeout, and so we'll stretch it out a little bit more. 115 left, 75-56. We mentioned Archibong with the 19 points, 15 rebounds. Uganda and Yekwe, 16 points. Tim Begley with 13. Andrew Tool has eight points. Brand Dunphy's got a lot of weapons he'll be bringing into the tournament. And if anybody is taking them lightly because of their Ivy League status, they're in for a surprise. Well, 25 victories is pretty impressive. Most victories ever was 28 back in 1970-71. And the point guard on that team is the current Penn Athletic Director, Steve Bilski. Mm. This group of players Fran Dunphy has, he's got a chance. This could turn out to be his best group. He had a great roster of players led by Jerome Allen and Matt Maloney in the early mid-90s. Three straight undefeated seasons in the Ivy League. And so this team has some accomplishments before they could get up to that level. Or even the level of the Michael Jordan, Matt Langle teams of more recent vintage, but there is a lot of talent on this Penn team. Well, those two teams that you allude to are both guard-oriented teams. Matt Langle, of course, was a terrific perimeter shooter. Matt Maloney, also a great perimeter shooter, but this team has the ability to do a number of different things. They can defend. They've got shot blocking. They've got athleticism. They shoot the perimeter shot well. But they also have a post-up game with Archibong and Nickway. So I think Fran's got the opportunity to push more buttons with his team, and it's obviously going to be back. Archibong makes two for two. Coco Archibong had only six points at halftime. He's got 21 points now, 21 points and 16 rebounds. Love it, Mr. Three, and then a whistle going for the rebound. Still 106 remaining. They've got to give Yale credit, I guess, for not giving any ground here down the stretch. But the outcome has been decided. A 21-point difference with just 106 left and has you, left the Bulldogs glum on their bench. As you point out, John, they're going to have an NIT opportunity. And all of a sudden, I think the Yale basketball tickets are going to be in demand mm. in New Haven. Matt Minoff at the line, making the front end of a two-shot set. And the second by Minoff is good. 77-58. Well, Minoff's played some international ball in the Maccabea games. Cherry Blue, New Jersey native. We cross the one-minute mark now. Coco Archibong in the right wing. Yo-Yo's in, comes back out. There's Dan Salamito into the lineup now for the first time. Penn Senior getting a little playing time here at the end of the game. Quakers wind the shot clock down to 10 seconds. And just 40 on the game clock. Klatsky sends it inside to Inyekwe. Again, looking for a little showtime. 
Up in the front court, Mark Lovett missed the layup. Rebound, Tim Begley. Begley dribbles out. He had a good first half, Tim Begley. This should be it, John, although we've got a stoppage in play. I think Fran called a timeout, Fran Dunphy did, to make a substitution. He's going to get another one of his seniors, and he's got one more senior on his roster, and that is John Tross. And Fran Dunphy will stop the clock to allow the senior to get into this special Ivy League championship playoff game. The only two seniors in the building tonight, and they get into the ball game in the last minute of play. So just about everybody else is going to be back for another go at it next year. 21 seconds remaining. Play resumes. A slew of Penn reserves in the lineup now. 77 to 58. Quakers by 19 points, looking to put the finishing touches on an impressive win. And frankly, we came into this game expecting a close, tight basketball game. Each of these teams had defeated Princeton by 16 points this week and each beat each other during the regular season. But tonight, it was all Penn Quakers and Fran Dunphy and company are going back to the NCAA tournament. score the Pennsylvania Quakers 77 the Yale Bulldogs 58 next stop the big dance coverage continues in a moment stay with us in October college basketball season tips off then the countdown begins 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the CAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait. Order Mega March Madness today. Looking for this week's top choices in premium movies and sports? Take a shortcut. Turn to DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week for the week's hottest premium movies. It's flawless. And the inside scoop on your favorite sports action. Watch DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week on channels 212 and 500. Cool. Don't miss the best in movies and sports from DirecTV. Major League Baseball's next great moment with MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV. To order, visit us at directtvsports.com. 324 Division I college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind. Reach the tournament. They fight the odds. They beat the clock. Favorites stumble. Underdogs emerge. 64 make it to Mega March Madness. 32 survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet 16. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. Final score from Kirby Fieldhouse in Easton, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania 77, Yale 58. They are cutting down the nets, heading to the NCAA tournament. Let's go somewhere in that mix of people is Matt Yaloff. Matt, what do you have? Well, I'll tell you what, I've never felt shorter in my entire life out on this floor. Coco Archibong, unbelievable. 21 points, 16 rebounds. You just cut down the net. Tell me how you feel. I mean, it feels great. We worked hard as hell, and uh, I'm glad it paid off in the end. I'm so happy, man. It's a tough game. Ten games in a row you guys won. You probably